Okay, hello everybody. Thought I'd take you along with me as I start, well not start, pick up again, uh, shaping this master. I'm uh, going to change its shape a little bit. I had initially defined a line that went up to this corner from the bottom of the cheek piece. I made for kind of a sharp edge. It wasn't going to be comfortable when gripping it like this. It was a very fine edge that I think would have been challenging to maintain and you know, I might even have lost it. And then I thought it looked like the line was forced. It was just so skinny and small, even though, you know, there was an obvious line. It, it just, uh, it wasn't going to work for me. So I'm going to do this line that I've done before, uh, carry this up forward to the front of the trigger guard opening. I like that smoother, more organic, natural shape. It seems less forced. <clears throat> and it's a, uh, it's an unusual line that I've never seen anybody else do, but I've done it quite a few times now. <clears throat> I like it. it. seems to be uh, well received. So uh, what I did, I knocked off the Bondo from my previous line that I didn't like. It needs a little bit more rounding. And then I used a, uh, I guess that's a three-quarter inch uh, rounded nose um, saber bit from Chainsaw Sculptors to sort of initially define where I want this to be and it's not quite really there yet it just it's a good start maybe I should take that up again a little bit I think I will here in a minute and then I'm gonna build up just a little hill of Bondo right over the lip there um, that'll be too tall but it'll give me something to shape fair and proud of the surface and then I'll use a sheet of plexiglass or aluminum with tape on it <coughs> uh, along this whole side up onto that little bit of a raised ridge and then fill this whole side in to match that newly defined height. So uh, here we go. I'm just going to work this shape again just a little bit. this a little bit here just to highlight it for myself what that line is looking like I don't think I want it to go up quite as high as I marked it there seems like my drawn line is I mean my uh, defined line here is pretty good do it like that um, so yeah that's uh, hopefully that uh, is visible but I, I need to make this a little more proud though because I don't want to just remove material in order to create that line I want to also add some so here we go fortunately this Bondo they, you know you buy a gallon these days and you get two-thirds of a gallon so it's been six months since I've been in this can what was setting up the new shop moving etc not in that order so it's pretty pretty darn thick. That is too bad. It's basically probably not going to survive to the end of the jar. And that's going to be too much. But, oh well. There's no sense trying to put it back in the can, huh? Alright, so I'm just going to mix up this little batch here. I'm going to add a touch of acetone to it because it's so uh, thick. Put my finger over the can and just get a little dribbles. Maybe. Dribble me, please. Oh, we're almost empty. There we go. Yep, not much in there. Uh, I got one on back stock. Alright, I'm just going to mix up the acetone in this. That makes it a little thinner pastiness. Nice. Now we got it like a little bit soup, maybe hopefully not too soupy. I think it'll be alright. 
And now the uh, the ratio is supposed to be about a pea size of hardener to a golf ball size of resin. And I mix it hotter than that. So that's probably a pea size right there for one fourth of a golf golf ball. Yeah, that seems like an okay color. You can see that color in there. Yeah, well, I don't want to mess with it too much. Well, it is a little bit thin. It's sagging a little bit. It's okay. And I'm going to put some down here where I braided the wood. That's going to be the line right there. Let me fill this in a little bit here. See, I put uh, material on the end of the dowel and then twist it into place. And it's easy to overwork it. Don't be tempted to do that, I'm telling myself. Alright, and then we got a pretty good divot here. I had to grind down into it to get rid of the paint. So that's all right. I'm just going to fill this in like that. Catch that little spot like that. And I think I'm just going to leave it alone there. I'm going to let that kick about halfway. See if you can see that. Getting a good angle of the light on there. And I uh, guess I could smooth that a little bit. And it's starting to get sticky already. Nice. So I'm going to let that kick for a minute, and then I'll get back, come back to you. Okay, it's been about 10 or 15 minutes, and it is pretty well set. And so uh, I removed uh, some more paint on the length of the forearm with 80 grit on a uh, block of wood. I prepared a, a section of the workbench to my right by uh, putting down a couple uh, widths of wide plastic packing tape. Um, I'm going to uh, smooth this out. I'm going to smear Bondo over the whole thing. I'm going to take it to the other workbench. I'm going to squish it down flat onto that packing tape, put a couple steel weights on it to hold it in place, and develop this new extra thickness to the forearm to accommodate this feature. So, sorry about that. This is a coarse uh, wood resp. This is Corona brand. I like this one because the teeth go uh, right to the whoa, oh. the teeth go right to the edge. Um, so I like I like this brand. So it's still pretty soft. Shapes very easily. Just a little more. All right. 
just for fun, I'd like to define this line a little bit here, just, just for fun. Well, you probably can't see what I'm doing. good. So, let's mix up a batch of Bondo. I'm going to smear. Oh, look what I did. Boy, it's hard filming. Bad, bad, bad. It's hard being on the camera and remembering how to do everything. Well, hold on a minute. That's no good. I try to keep a dowel going as long as possible. I mean, it's just a piece of dowel, right? But if I pay attention and clean it each time, it'll last a long time. All right, well. Big deal. Alright, mixing a bigger batch this time. Maybe if I zoom this out, you can see what I'm doing. Just nothing too exciting. Scoop and Bondo, wiping it off on the inside of the cup to get it off of the stick. This stuff is really sticky. We're going to add a little acetone to it, and I think I'm going to make just a little bit more. Because we'll use this stuff up before it completely <laughs> dries up and goes away. All right, finger over the acetone to control its flow. Very little bit is necessary. And now I'm going to fold it in and fold it in until I get something I can mix. All right. Now let me tilt you back down again a little bit. And we're going to be going along the whole length of the thing, so let me just push the position you like that. And now, a fairly significant amount of hardener. Maybe something like that ought to be pretty darn hot. I mean, that's, that's quite a bit, probably twice as much as would normally be recommended. We'll see how it looks in color. But the fact there's acetone in it, I want it to be a little bit hot, and the fact that Yep, see this will be a little bit hot. And by hot I mean this is a thermosetting resin. It creates heat through a chemical reaction. And the heat is what makes it cure. If you want to accelerate it, put it in a warm space. But that color right there, if it's picked up on the camera, is just a little bit hot. That's where I want it to be. And now... I'm probably in the way. But I'm just going to smear. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to get in the way of the camera here and get this smeared on. There you go. Yeah, I'm going to have 
have to work quickly because this is going to set up pretty quick. Just keep it controlled, you know, as good as you can. All right, Let's go with the big smear. I'm doing a smear campaign. Oh, see, there's some section that didn't get mixed in the cup. That's all right. Just mix it right here. Don't let any big gray areas uh, get in there because they won't cure, and you'll just have to dig them out and redo it. Not that that's a big deal. All right, we're smearing. <coughs> Here's some more gray coming. Just want to get a little bit down the whole length if I can. It looks like that was a pretty good guess on quantity. Starting to get a little sticky. And we are just in time here. Yep, we gotta go. Gotta go, 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 go. And I'm gonna be over there. Get out of the way here. I'm gonna be over there. Oh, oh, sorry. I got it. I got it, I got it. Alright, I got some packing tape here. And I'm just going to go with a big squish. Like that. And I got some steel weights. I also have some lead poured into uh, tuna fish cans. Nice. Nice. Good squish. Fantastic. That's great. Do I have any more to work in there? Not really. I'm going to have to take care of the uh, edge. We'll do that on a separate operation. And clearly there's going to be other fill areas to have to do. Uh, workbench is made out of uh, TGI's uh, silent floor joists. It used to be my vacuum bagging table. And now it's become a miter saw and spindle sander. Not really a spindle sander though, it's a drill press sander. Sometimes in life we use what we got, right? Alright, I did a little bit of cleanup and that's going to sit and kick for a little bit and I will check back in with you all in about 10 or 15 minutes when we pop it off the table. Okay, it's been about 10 minutes. Here we are again. I can uh, test from this from the mixing cup that it's pretty stiff. So I know that's Good. There we go. Newly defined uh, side. Yay. Uh, let me take you over here and we'll see what we got. Looks pretty good. This will all get rounded and uh, flattened off on the uh, belt sander. I uh, expected it to squish into my uh, line here, but that's okay. We've got quite a bit of it still there, so this is no problem at all. And here I knew this was going to be short, but that's okay. We'll flatten this, and then we'll stick this... Uh, let me turn around this way. We'll stick this on the plastic tape on the workbench and fill this in to... Uh, anyway. It'll take a couple or three applications to 
uh, finish getting the new forearm side filled in where we want it, but it looks good. So this I think I can just take off because it's nice and soft still. I can just take off like this back to my curve. Yep. Sculpting with fingernails. That'll be the name of my new YouTube channel. Sculpting with fingernails. I'm kidding, of course. So, that is looking very nice. Good curve. It needs to be a little higher in there. We'll work that. Maybe some by hand. Maybe some with the burr. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn you all off while I work on filling this. Uh, while it's still sticky, fresh bond will stick to it pretty good. If I let this totally cure, I'm going to want to hit this with a wire wheel to abrade it to make sure the bondo sticks to the previous level good. But I'm just going to do it right now. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill these sections and put it back on its side. And I will use uh, something to flatten this while it's on its side. Yep, that's the plan. Stan. That's going to work out just fine. So, we'll check back in with you in a little while. Bye. Okay, well I took a little bit of a break while I let the uh, several different applications of Bondo I did on the forearm cure. Uh, while I was waiting, I pulled two giant privet hedge bush trees. They're trees. They're giant. They must be 50 years old. Uh, I pulled two more of those stumps and worked on this giant oleander stump that I've been working on for a couple of weeks and it's down to its last root or two underneath. I've got like major motion with it. If I get the truck around to it I could yank it out of the ground but at this point I just did a little hydraulic mining and pushed it around and tomorrow when my hole dries I'll uh, get under there with the saw one more time and there's only got to be one or two more roots holding it in, so that'll be fantastic. Get that out of here. Well, while I've been talking, I'm sure you've been looking at what i got going on here. You can tell me in the comments section if you like this shape. Um, I'm going to work this uh, curve a little bit more. I want to lower it down just a little bit right in here, and so I can curl this edge over a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's what i got going on right now. And if I completely change my mind, I can take it all off and I can just round this right here, kind of more traditional fashion. But I'm just looking for an interesting line. This is going to be a really spectacular piece of wood. It's a thousand dollar piece of wood that uh, this is going to be carved into. And, you know, I'd like to give it a little extra interest. Something to make it really uh, stand out and show off that grain and figure nice. So, anyway, that's what I got going on and we'll see what the client thinks about it. And tonight I'll uh, do some little applications of Bondo and kind of rework this curve. Work this edge here a little bit. I want to roll that off somehow. I'm not quite sure. Maybe it's going to stay kind of like that. I mean, you don't really grip it except for carrying the gun. I mean, in shooting position, it's more like that. So I don't think this is, this isn't an issue. You know, you're not going to shoot it like that. I like having that line. The wood will get a little thin there. Well, anyway, that's why I want to lower this line down a little bit, I think. So I'm just going to keep kind of playing with it. And uh, next time I post a video on this, uh, it'll probably be painted and ready to put in the machine. So we'll see what you all think. And I'll go assemble this together on the computer and get it uploaded. And we'll check in with you all real soon. Okay, bye now.